Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased collection as usual. Today I would like to do a little bit of algebra and representation theory. So I'm going to talk about a theorem which goes under various names. They all look very similar, so it's not like it's a mess. But sometimes it's the artin wedderburn theorem, sometimes it's the wedderburn artin theorem, and sometimes it's the Wedderburn theorem. I've never seen just Artin by itself. Uh, but anyway, I go with the name artin wedderburn theorem. And it's essentially what matrices. We'll see what that means. So I would like to tell you a story, and then we come to some conclusion in the end. And essentially, it's about linear spaces and matrices, but in a slightly roundabout way. So it's not quite the usual one from linear spaces to matrices that you would, uh, kind of the usual road you would take, um, but slightly different. Uh, we'll see. But maybe not so different. Actually, maybe not so different. We'll see. Anyway, so um, the big flavor or big idea in mathematics in general is an idea of a substructure. So you have some form of a structure, whatever that means. Um, in this case, I'm discussing vector spaces. And you will have a kind of nice notion, a good notion of what it means to be a substructure of whatever kind of structure you're studying. So you're studying a certain type of structure and you might have smaller structures of the same type and that's a substructure. So for vector spaces, just very simple, uh, the correct notion of a substructure is a linear subspace. So here my parent vector spaces are three, just three space, and I have several, let me three, sub vector spaces here. So I have a two dimensional one here, which is a plane, right? So the two dimensional substructure in this case is a plane. Here's another one, and the intersection of them is another one, so 1D subspace. And then there's a city subspace, the zero dimensional subspace, uh, which I kind of will ignore. And then there's another city subspace, namely uh, the vector space itself. And I call this guy and this guy, I call them trivial. So I'm only interested in non-trivial substructures. So in any kind of theory, whatever kind of structure means, there will always be trivial substructures and I'm always ignoring them. Anyway, for vector spaces, the correct notion is a linear subspace. That's what, just what it is. And um, very classical, you would kind of want to define um, the kind of minimal type of structure you see here. So what is uh, a simple vector space, I will explain the notion simple in a second, is would be the one without non-trivial substructures. But since you can always have a line somewhere, unless you are already a line, because then it would be the whole space, um, the only simple vector space is actually a one-dimensional space, which is really just the ground field. And you can ask the same type of question in kind of any form of mathematics. Here you just have a really simple answer. Right? Vector space is very well behaved. The classification of the building blocks uh, of the theory is really, really simple. The building blocks of the theory are just, uh, well, uh, one-dimensional spaces, so the ground field. And what I would like to address today is what is the analog in the theory of rings or completely analogously algebra. So whether you like rings or algebras better, um, the theory we're going to discuss is, is exactly the same. It doesn't really matter. But what we are looking for is the following. We are looking for the correct notion of a simple ring algebra, whatever, and we want to classify them. And um, simple just means it has non-trivial substructures. By definition, that's always the same. And right? it's a building block of the theory. There is nothing simpler of the same uh, type included. Simple doesn't need to mean simple in the sense of the, the word that you use in everyday life. So it can still quite to be quite sophisticated. We don't know yet. Um, but simple and more is more like in the sense there is it's the simplest of its kind. There is no substructure involved, no non-trivial one. And the correct notion of substructure is an ideal. And in this talk, I'm only considering two-sided ideals. So a two-sided ideal is, is exactly the type of substructure in a ring. And why is that the one I would like to consider? Well, usually you would think of a ring somewhere and you have some sequence of ideals, whatever, and blah, 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 blah. And the point is it's a substructure because I can now consider the quotient, which is another ring, a smaller ring, and it kind of sits 
already in my original ring. So in order to study R, I could study this chain of R1 up to R2, R3, R4. So it's not simple in that sense. But if you don't have anything to quotient by, you're gonna have a simple, that's kind of the idea. It's a simple of its form. And then the correct notion of subspace is not of a subalgebra because you can't take nice quotients, but of an ideal. So, and then the simple, the elements of the theory, the simple rings, the simple algebras are the ones without non-trivial ideals. So here's an example. So the integers, kind of a very, very, very simple example of, uh, so I shouldn't use too, too much the word simple here in this case, a very nice example of a ring. And it has just a really sophisticated structure of ideals actually. So there are a lot of them, so it's clearly not simple. So uh, every integer essentially defines to an ideal, right? So two Z, the even integers is an ideal because uh, even times anything is even. Uh, the integers divisible by four is an ideal that sits in two. The integers divisible by eight is an ideal that sits in four and so on. So 12 would sit in six and four. It's a very sophisticated structure of uh, ideals. So certainly Z is not simple. It's not, it's not a simple structure. Okay. But um, the question is like in the vector space case, right? The classification was really trivial here. So can we kind of classify those building blocks of ring theory? Can we classify simple rings, simple algebras? Um, not clear at all, actually. I will comment on that uh, later. But let's just think of the easiest example. So the easiest algebraic structure, kind of the most rigid one, uh, where you really can't play around with very a lot of strange examples, there are very, very few of them, are fields. So fields are... are so group is a very, very much larger class of, of things and fields are just very rigid. There are not many of them. Um, the, the finite fields are completely classified, for example. So it's kind of the easiest, let me just call it easiest. Luckily, I've not chosen simples here, but it's really the easiest algebraic structure in some sense. Uh, it's a field and a commutative simple ring is always a field because otherwise you would have a maximal ideal you could quotient by that maximal ideal. So what we are looking for in this classification is somehow a non-commutative analog of a field, right? So the commutative simple ones are fields. What about the non-commutative ones? What is a non-commutative analog of a field in the sense of uh, simple? So, um, and it turns out that there's a very beautiful classification. It's extremely simple and I shouldn't use simple. I just said I shouldn't use simple. It's extremely satisfying. So that's a very satisfying uh, classification, namely matrices. The only simple rings or algebras, whatever, are matrix, matrix rings or algebras, really just matrices. That's it. Um, nothing fancy. Any two by two matrices, three by three matrices, four by four matrices, but any of them. And this is really an absolutely uh, easy. Luckily, I've used easy here. And it's very easy compared to classification of other simple things that you might have seen. Classification of simple finite groups is this monster of a classification where a lot of strings in this nice picture here, a lot of strings from very different fields of mathematics come together and it's really, really difficult. So in most cases, I only showed you kind of a very trivial example, vector spaces, classification is really easy. And in the case of rings, it's still easy, which is very surprising because as soon as you leave this world, essentially hell breaks loose. So simple Lie algebras are way more complicated to classify. Simple, um, in this case, groups are extremely difficult to classify. And in this case, we get this really, really beautiful answer, like matrices. What is non-commutative generalization of fields? And matrices. So what are the easiest rings? Matrices. And that's a really beautiful theorem, in my opinion, because matrices are just the most important algebraic object, if you want. Uh, ever. <laughs> so matrices just appear everywhere. And here's another reason why they do. There's the symbols of its kind. Okay. Um, you might have seen a more general version of the theorem, which is actually the, the one you usually use in representation theory. So my picture for representation theory is the character table of S3. If you have never seen that before, doesn't matter, ignore the picture, but this is my picture for representation theory. Anyway, so in, that's just a more general version. Um, it's not much more general, but it's a little bit more general. And it says something like the semi-simple uh, algebras or rings are direct sums of matrices. So whenever you have something semi-simple, um, it's not quite simple, it's not quite completely trivial, but it's semi-simple. 
uh, it, it's something related to matrices again, which is really kind of the, the main, one of the main tools you use in representation theory. So here, for example, of finite groups. So if you do finite groups over the complex numbers, it's always semi-simple. So they're always matrix rings. So group rings over the complex numbers are always matrix rings, which is um, very surprising. So if you're a real expert, let me just say that I have some finite dimensionality assumptions everywhere. Otherwise I would need to be more careful choosing my words, but I just don't want to. So everything is reasonably finite in uh, this talk. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, enjoyed this theorem as much as I do. It's one of these classifications which have a surprisingly easy, uh, not simple, a surprisingly easy answer and uh, a quite beautiful one, right? Matrices are the easiest forms of rings. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.